going on guys so this video is going to be about the best and the worst items in the battle box december edition um if you like this style of video because i have strong opinions on this particular month i really like this knife and i really don't like this flashlight so this is literally the best thing in the box and the worst thing in the box to me uh, not only in quality but just excitement for myself uh, but if you like this style of video, let me know and I'll do this for every battle box. It just depends on what you guys want to see. I make the videos for you, so you give me feedback. Let me know if you want to see this for every box or if you just don't care. Because I kind of touch upon it while I'm opening the box anyway. But after I open a box, I start using the gear, I have a slightly different opinion than my initial opinion. My initial opinion on this flashlight, when I first saw it was, oh, that's great. I'm glad they're including a flashlight. And then I opened it and I kind of thought like, wow, that's kind of chintzy. And then I actually used it and thought, wow, that is super crappy. Um, and then with the knife, I opened it and thought, oh, nice. Of course, I appreciate it for all knives, but I thought, all right, uh, Tops makes a good knife. This particular one is the Fieldcraft, all right, the B.O.B., the Brothers of Bushcraft. I thought, that's a nice knife, but then when I started using it, I thought, wow, that's a really nice knife. So literally the best and the worst of BattleBox. So as far as the, the knife goes, because I'll, I'll do best first, yeah, I mean, it's a cool design. It's an awesome bushcraft design. Um, it's very comfortable in the hand. I actually started using the thing. It's nice and sharp, and it just performs great. I'm extremely happy with it. This is basically the value of that box. And what's interesting is that these sell for a closer price to retail. So sometimes when you're looking at the Battle Box breakdown, that, that little card they give you that shows all the prices, those are usually like MSRP, not necessarily dealer costs. So if you see something... And they say it's worth $50, but, you know, most times you could buy it for 30 That's not, I mean, it's, yeah, it's a $50 value, but it's not really what they cost to sell or for you to buy. Whereas with the knife, the actual cost they show, which was $150, they sell for like $130. So it's a lot closer to the actual price. So considering the battle box is $150 for the, the Pro Edition, this is pretty much the value of the entire box. And the other stuff is essentially, you know, freebies or just add-ons, you know. So I'm extremely happy with the knife. It is American made, as you can see in the blade, USA. A lot of people are into bushcraft. I mean, it's just a very, very nice quality knife. So I was even more impressed after using the knife. Now, as far as the, well, I still don't like this sheath design. The actual sheath, totally fine. It's just the Velcro's gotta go. It really should be a butt snap or something. Um, you know, I just, it, eventually, like I said, that'll wear out and it's not gonna retain in the sheath anymore because it's not form fitted or anything. But the knife itself, awesome, very, very cool. Now with the flashlight, it's the opposite. The knife, I thought was pretty nice out of the box and it got even better when I used it. It, it proved itself even more so, right? The flashlight I thought was kind of junky and the more I used it, the more I realized how horrible it really was. So it got even worse with use, okay? It's got nice packaging and everything, nice sleeve here, nice box, right? A couple people point out that this exact same flashlight is branded for a bunch of different companies. Right? It's got the Battle Box logo on there. I do like the nice orange button so it's easily findable in the dark, right? Obviously, if you're grabbing flashlights because it's dark. So the orange button is very nice. In fact, I will probably end up taking this button off and utilizing that on a different flashlight that it fits. But the actual flashlight is just super cheap. It's like one of those one or two dollar flashlights. It has the same performance as the dollar store flashlights, half of them that I did that video on. All right, so, uh, you know, click it in for on. We have high here. If you do a half press, it changes the modes. There's low, and then we have strobe. But the high and low are extremely close. But um, on high here, you can see the beam, it's all flood. Of course, again, parabolic lens, so it's adjustable. You can focus that beam. So here it is, right? And focus it down. We have horrible rings. Um, and then if I pull way back here, rotate this around you can see it's literally the shape of the led you don't get the detail in the picture because it's drowning it out a little bit maybe if i put it on the low mode you might be able to tell but uh but yeah i mean it's just it's just very very low quality it is a flashlight i would never whoops say so turning it on and off it changes the mode each time too so it's not it doesn't have mode memory you have to make sure that you're in the mode you want I would never um, use this focused. It's it just, it's way more impressive looking on camera than in person. It, it's not lighting anything up. And it's so, it's such a small beam. Actually, let me turn the camera for a second here against the wall so you can see this. All right, I'm zoomed in on the wall now so you can see the beam pattern. Let me back it up just a little bit here. So it's literally just reflecting the shape of the LED. Now the problem is right now I'm probably five feet away from the wall and the actual beam fully concentrated is about three or four inches wide. 
okay? If I were to pull back even more to maybe like seven, eight feet or whatever, I mean, it, it stretches out to about five or six inches. And the big issue here is that it's not bright enough to actually throw outside more than like 10 or 15 feet. So essentially when this is zoomed in, it's not functional. It's not a flashlight. It's not providing any kind of light that you can see anything at all. Now, another thing that I noticed on this is that this crenulated bezel here is extremely, extremely thin. And these edges are very, very sharp. Okay, so yes, if you were to actually use this for its intended purpose, obviously people know that it's so, if you put your flashlight down, okay, you know it's on. That's like a secondary purpose. The main purpose is for impacting, for defense. If you were to hit someone with this, it would tear skin. This is probably the most effective crenulated bezel, simply because of the fact that it's so darn thin and sharp. But what does that mean? 99.999% of the time, you're not bashing skulls with your flashlight. You're keeping it in your pocket, especially because this has a pocket clip on it. So what that means for you is that you're just ripping up your pants. You're not ripping up foreheads and uh, you know criminals, and you're not defending yourself with this. You're just ruining your clothes. So that's an issue too with carry is that it's extremely sharp. It's going to damage anything that's in your pocket. It's going to damage your pocket itself. So, you know, essentially it just comes down to it is a super cheap flashlight. So that is my worst pick for the battle box in 2017, December edition. So, you know, it's all opinion, obviously, but um, as far as you buying all the stuff separate, every single battle box has been consistent where if you bought all the rest of the gear and put it together yourself, it would cost you twice as much, if not more, than doing the battle box. It's just, like I said, a surprise is not for everyone. I remember back in the 90s, there was a store local to us and they had grab bags all the time. They had all kinds of toys. That's when like pogs were popular and all that kind of stuff, baseball cards. And um, this guy used to have these bags. It was a brown paper lunch bag and he charged five bucks for it. And he guaranteed that inside the bag was $30 worth of stuff. It's a, it's a grab bag. A lot of companies still do this. I think Bud K still does that, where you get a grab bag. You pay 20 bucks for $50 worth of stuff, but you don't know what's in there. You just have an idea what's in there. In this particular case, it was baseball cards and, and pogs and, and stuff like that. And sometimes you'd open the bag and it'd be crap. It'd be $30 worth of junk you don't want. And sometimes I opened that bag and it was like a, a big fat brass slammer for my pogs and I was super excited about it. But we loved getting them because you never knew what you got, right? It's like going to play a lottery. You don't know what you're going to get. You're hoping you're going to get something cool, but you don't always do. That's how I see the whole thing. It's exciting for me. It's exciting for a lot of people. But for some people, it's a waste of time and a waste of money. So that's up to you. You're the consumer and you got to spend your money wisely. So anyway, that's it. If you like this video and you want to see this for every battle box, let me know. I can certainly do that in the future. So I hope you guys have a wonderful day and I'll see you guys soon. Take care.